Hello, I will show you how to do panel data models in R. Before we proceed, please make sure that you have watched my lecture as well as the example. Okay, so here is the R Studio and I have opened the R program which is available on my website as well as the data. And here's the program, the R program, and here I have executed it already so that we can just look uh, at the output and save some time. The first thing to do is install packages PLM for uh, panel linear models. So you would need to go in uh, packages right here and install packages and find PLM here and then click install um, and before you begin. Okay. So I have already done that. Another way to install it is just delete uh, this pound sign here, run, run this line, and then make sure that you use library PLM so that you load the package into the memory uh, so that we can use it. So for this example, we will use uh, a panel data set for wages. And this is the directory where I saved it. So we're reading the file here and we're attaching the data. So now we have the data in the memory and I have opened it here so we can look at it. Okay. So we have panel data um, and here is the ID. This is uh, the cross-sectional dimension for the first individual, second individual, third individual and so on. And then we have the time dimension from one to seven for the first individual, second individual, third individual, and so on. Uh, our dependent variable would be log wage, and you can see how that varies for each individual, uh, both within the individual and between individuals. And our independent variables would be experience. You see how like that changes by one unit. And then we have weeks uh, that they worked. Uh, and then we will also have education here. And you see how like the education does not vary for, e for the individual. It's a time invariant one. It varies between individuals, but not within individuals. Okay, so this will be the data that we will be using. Uh, and so one thing that I'm doing is declaring that this will be my Y variable and log wage that would be my dependent variable and this will be the independent variables. So hopefully if you have, um, uh, if you change this program with your dependent and independent variables here, hopefully the rest of the program would run for you without having to make any other changes. Uh, so the first thing to do is to set the data as panel data and the way to do that is with plm.data. Uh, you put here the, the the name of your data file and index C first you point to the uh, cross-sectional dimension and then the time dimension of the data so that R now knows which one is the cross-sectional and the time, di time series dimension. The next thing you can do is summarize uh, the data and we can use summary of X and Y and these are the averages for Y and for the four axes that we have here. The uh, pool OLS estimator uh, that we want to estimate and notice that all of them follow the same uh, syntax is uh, PLM, then you provide the dependent variables, squiggly part and all the independent variables, data equals P data and make sure that here you don't point to the original data but rather to this P data where we have set it up using the PLM command uh, so that R recognizes that this is um, actually panel data. And then model equals pooling. Uh, and then we're summarizing this, this results here that we called pooling. So if we look at the output, these are the results. And we have the coefficients uh, are listed here, okay? So if you notice here, we have a positive effect of experience on the log wages. The between estimator, again, it's exactly the same syntax as before, uh, except that you put the between here. And these are the results that we get. 
um, so we get the coefficient is 0.03 so remember that the between estimator what it does is uh, it calculates averages for the x and y variables over time and then regresses one on the other so if if the average ex experience of a person increases by one year then we have a 3% increase in, in wages because I'm saying 3% because it's in log wages the way we measured uh, the dependent variable. Okay? So the next thing to do is the first differences estimator and you put here for our models as first differences. Okay, here are the results for the first differences and uh, notice that uh, some of the variables actually got dropped here and the reason for that is that uh, we have um, if we have uh, education education does not vary from one year to the next and therefore uh, when you um, when you have uh, trying to calculate difference between this year and last year we would have zeros and therefore we cannot have such a variable in, in here. And same with uh, experience, which increases by one year uh, deterministically. Okay, so for the within estimator, uh, again, we have the same syntax except for here for within. And these are the results that we have here for within. Okay, and we have uh, experience, experience square and uh, weeks worked so notice that again we don't have the education variable and we have again positive influence of experience on log wages uh, for within so if a person has worked has had one more year of experience we have 11 percent um, increase uh, in, in wages so for the random effect estimator the only thing that is different we put random here and these would be the results. So one of the interesting things about the random effects model is that also summarizes theta or lambda as we called it in the lecture note. And this is what percent of the variation comes from the individual variation versus the idiosyncratic one. And here we have that most of the variation comes from the individual. So that's, that's a good sign. So again, we see a positive effect of experience on log wages. Okay, so next what we will do is the Lagrange multiplier test for the random effects versus OLS. And we do that with PLM test of pooling the results. Okay, so here's the test statistic that we have here and then the p-value is very small therefore we have significant effects and we would want to uh, go ahead and estimate um, a random effects model uh, and if you want to do a fixed effects versus a null less uh, model then we do that with pf test and you provide the estimates from the fixed effects model that we obtain here and the pooling which we obtain here and so again, we see uh, significant effects here, which means we have more support for the fixed effects model in comparison to the OLS model. And finally, the Hausmann test, which you, you always need to use in panel data models, and that is done by pH test, uh, so panel Hausmann test, and you provide the random uh, effects results here and the fixed effects results here that we obtained and we want to compare how close are the coefficients of these two models. So here's the chi-square statistic and degrees of freedom is the number of variables minus one and we have very small p-value which means that one of the models is inconsistent. So if one of the models is inconsistent this means that we need to go with a fixed effects model because that would give us consistent estimates. So that was what I had about panel data models with R. Thanks for watching.